how we've arrived. We think our trailer's right back in there. So let's go check it out. Lean towards the color that lies within. some camping it's fine okay. like we always say get out, get out and do, do some camping. camping we'll see you next time guys we'll fill you in on what's going on with our future oh but we got <laughs> hey guys matt and wendy back mwd adventures we have some exciting news great news yes go ahead we got a new trailer yes we decided to upgrade to the 5x10 XL so did you really think we were gonna get out a hiker trailer <laughs> oh no not at all we have our camp out coming up in September we couldn't show up with some big old 30 footer if we went to that exactly and it's got a new color to it yes shiny red shiny red so it's kind of a it's not bright red but it's kind of a burgundy red um, this is one thing Wendy really wanted to do is change up the color. I was a little hesitant, but now that we got the trailer, I really like it. It's sharp. It's a nice looking trailer. So um, a few of the upgrades, we got a five by 10. So we have an extra foot in the inside and we've added some extra storage in there. So it's amazing how much extra you can fit in with just a foot extra. And the XL adds two inches ground clearance and we moved the tire to the front. So it has a little bit different look. Uh, we wanted to try something different. We've had this is our third trailer so with having the third trailer we wanted to kind of change it up to try something new and different so we can share our experiences with you guys so with that said we got some video when we went down to the factory and picked up the trailer and walked around some of the different things it has to offer and we'll roll that footage now we're so excited today is the day we have a one o'clock conference call with hiker trailer and they should be calling any minute we are going to talk to them it's really cool. So any new customers that come along, they will do a conference call with them with Zoom or FaceTime and actually walk around the trailer, make sure everything's the way it is before you come and get it. So just waiting for that call to dial in. Let's check it out. Going to be there next weekend? Uh, no, my son plays baseball. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, so I'll... Right. So. Yeah, it looks great. Absolutely Good. looks great. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hold it right I'm there just to, one second. Glad to hear you're happy and excited about it. Yep. Yes, absolutely. We can't wait to get down there. This container store is crazy. There's everything known to man here. I can't believe all the containers. I think Wendy is in like overload mode with all the container options. So I'm trying to figure out what we want to do for the hiker. I'm gonna add something new for 2022. Amazing, all these different containers we have and we end up going back to Amazon for the basics. We're gonna try these guys here. 
These are very similar to the bentos we have now, so use those on the top shelf. We'll see if they work. I don't know. Made by Made Smart. So we're gonna pick up the set, give them a whirl. Wilson's, here we come. Ready for fresh apple pie. Get some popcorn. Yes. Some homemade jam, some traffic jam. Ha, ha, ha. Since we're in the traffic jam. Traffic jam is good. They're so funny. Uh, I can't remember how many berries are in traffic jam. It's like three, four. Something like that. Nothing better. First stop is Wilson's Market. Got to get our fresh jam. Apple pie and some awesome popcorn. Cool looking bridge. Mm -hmm. It's a cool covered bridge in this little park. You ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. You? Yes. Go see our new baby. So we just had lunch at this county park. Mill Creek, Mill Race, I think Mill Race Mill Park. Mill Race Park. Yep. So, yep. did that, so we are ready to go. Let's load up. Got full right. bellies. Got about five, ten minute drive over to the hiker. We'll be there. All right. Let's go. So excited. What's your thoughts? We're here. Excited? I am. I'm excited to see the new color. Yeah. You were a little iffy about it, but I think you're going to like it. I sure hope so. You will. Okay. Let's go check it out. Hey, there it is. <laughs> What's that? It's like we're playing around with your trailer. We've got some new goodies. We'll see how long this stuff lasts. <laughs> All right. Do the goodies go home with us? Of course. Just got it. There it is, in the flesh. So we have our Okay, go ahead. So welcome to our new trailer. We got the 5x10 mid-range XL this time. So definitely sits higher than our other ones. So Jordan's gonna help us take a look at it and see what this one all has. All right, so why did they do the tire on the front versus doing it underneath? So with the XLs, the tires are so much just wider mm -hmm. that most people are gonna do it on the front because Typically, a lot of people are getting the XLs for that ground clearance. Yeah. Because this has more ground clearance than any other model, and that's including the extreme off-road. Does it really? Yeah, wow. so putting that underneath is going to really eliminate that, because that even goes down further than the water tank itself. So. so, how much higher does this sit than the extreme off-road? If, you, <laughs> have, if you have nothing underneath there, I'm, I want to say it's around like the seven-inch mark. Okay. So, I mean, it's it's a fair amount. It it's, is. Considering how much higher, you know, that extreme off-road looks like it would be. Yeah. It's just that straight axle um, versus the torsion. So. Interesting. Okay. So, we went with the XL toolbox this time. So, it goes all the way to the edges where the large goes, what, maybe about two inches in on each side? Correct. Yep. So, let me see how much bigger this looks. All right. Plenty of room for all of your stuff. <laughs> of course. <laughs> all the outdoory, all stuff. dirty stuff stays in here. Yeah, exactly. So now I see you got a the on-off power switch already in there. Yep. You have a kill switch on there, which is now with every model. Okay. It used to be only the extreme off-road, but we changed that uh, probably about five months ago or so. Everybody started getting it. Nice. Now we went with the lithium battery. So, and then we got the inverter there. It looks like. Yep. Right. What's the thing kind of sitting right here? So the guy on the back, this is actually the uh, Renogy Wanderer. So this is your charge controller for your solar panel. Oh, okay. All right. You guys, 
new to the solar panels, you don't have one on your other models? We just have the portable. Portable, okay. So how does that work differently with this then? So essentially the portable ones, the charge controller is actually already built into that unit. Okay. So with the uh, mounted ones, basically it's external. Um, because the difference is either an unregulated solar panel or a regulated one. Okay. It's unregulated, it doesn't have a charge controller, you need one of these. So it's basically just one, one more step in between a portable okay. and a permanent, just as a protection. So, so that, that keeps nothing it from overcharging the battery? Yep, yeah, it keeps, you, keeps us from overcharging the battery, it keeps the battery from maybe you know, sending out too high of a voltage and frying the solar panel. Okay. So, yeah. so with these portable solar panels, not portable, with the permanent, how long is their lifetime typically? You know, I've honestly never heard of one having to be changed yet. Okay. Um, I'd say from what I've seen online, most people say even after five or six years of use, they're still running pretty well. Okay. Um, just with the material that they're made out of, you know, it is very durable, but being outside over time, especially if you're doing some rugged off-roading, you know, you're probably going to start noticing that the efficiency isn't what it used to be because it's going to get sense. scratched and everything now yeah. and again if you don't clean it properly. So I don't know if it's so much it just quits working, it's that it just stops working as well. As well. So you mentioned cleaning it. Is there any special thing that you need to do other than just kind of wipe it down periodically? Really, that's all that you would need to do is just okay. wipe it down, soap, water. And yeah. So we got to the air conditioning ports. Um, now we actually have an air conditioning unit on top, but we got them so that we can put the air vents on here. So when we don't want to use the air conditioning, we can still get fresh air in here, especially in the fall and springtime of camping. When we don't want the side windows right next to us open to give us a cold shoulder, we can have these on to get some air movement through the trailer. All right, so on this one, we got the screen on it this time. So you just pull on this little button here and that separates. So the reason that we wanted to do this is for me, really. I do the screen, I can take a nap in here, have the windows open and still have a cool place to lay down. So yeah, air conditioning, how does this work? So, it comes with a remote. It's really going to be pretty similar to like what a window unit might be in the house. Okay. So, remote, power it on, choose the temperature you want to set at. 60 is the lowest, so we've got it cranked to 60 to let you know it's working, how it feels. It does have a normal fan mode on it if you just want to circulate some air. So if you want a partner to go with your max fan, okay. then you've got it. So that's not making it cold, it's just running the air? That's correct. Okay. It's even got like temperature settings to where, you know, if you, you want to set it to where if it gets above 70 in here and that kicks on, you can do that as well. And it's got timers. Okay. So for fall camping or spring camping, does it have heat? Like, does it have a heat strip in it? This one does not. Okay. There is another unit out there. It's slightly bigger. Mm -hmm. So we are have to do some adjusting to the roof to make it fit. Mm -hmm. But we are looking into those options because we know that would be a fantastic option for people right. to have. Yeah. So... Two USB ports, a 12 volt, and then power button, which does activate that strip. It also turns on the voltmeter, so that way you can see your battery life when you're off grid. So if that's turned off, they're not working. Correct. If that switches off, then the unit itself does not work. Okay. Then the two buttons below it are for our lights on the outside. That's correct. Yep. One passenger and one driver's side. If that's on, it's a reminder that the light's on outside. I see we've got two plugs here. What are these both for? So, standard uh, shore power plug here. So this okay. is going to be your battery. And then this one here is actually going to be the air conditioner. This okay. AC does require 110 volt to run. Okay. So if you are off grid away from a campsite, you will need some type of generator mm -hmm. to be able to power it. Um, for anybody who gets AC in the future, we always try to keep them in the same locations. So battery charger is always here. Air conditioner is always on the left. So, so A. Yep. A comes first. Yep. <laughs> I do this whole thing to my head for a number of things. All right, so we've got the jacks here. Um, how big of a solar generator would you need to keep the air running? Well, it depends how long you want to keep it running. Yeah. Um, right now, we just purchased um, our new Goal Zero Yeti 3000. It says that it'll run the AC at the 60 degrees Fahrenheit for around like three and a half, four hours on full charge. Obviously, if you were to kick that down or kick the air up to maybe like 70, 72, something like that, you're gonna get more time out of it. Going to this black diamond style, mm -hmm. um, and but it's, it's like a little the, textured. Yeah, like, instead okay. of being rounded, they kind of yeah. have these like little harder folds, because okay. um, we've started trying to make all of them ourselves instead of outsourcing them. Yeah. Um, 
as, as you guys know, we make our own frames and stuff at our sister company, so we started doing this as well. That makes sense. And these have the through bolts so we can stand on them if we want to? That is correct. These are load bearing, so you can stand on these. All right, and what size tires are these? So these tires here, these are the 16 inch rims. Uh, I think it's like a 32 inch tire. Um, so as far as like height goes on this, I know we discussed this sitting a little bit higher than mm -hmm. your guys' mid-range earlier. Yes. So slightly larger tire, and then it's also got a two inch lift kit um, integrated underneath. So all in all, you're sitting around like four, four and a half inches taller than a normal mid-range with okay. your tire size and the lift kit. Okay. All right, so there's two different light options. For us, we decided to do the flood on both of the sides next to the doors. This is the spotlight that we have off the back. Trying to park a trailer at nighttime and we need some extra light, we can turn the flood on and we can see what we're backing into at the site. So as we open this up, we noticed a change from what our current trailer has. It's got all the battery stuff up here on the middle shelf instead of the bottom. So Jordan, why are you doing that now? So, Moving it up is a few different options. We're trying to make it to where you can maximize the space in the bottom of your galley. A lot of customers enjoy getting the vertical drawers that we offer. And with that, if the battery's down in the bottom, you don't really have an option, whether it's driver's side or passenger. We don't want to mount them driver's side because then your battery is not accessible because those are screwed into the floor to keep them from moving. So by moving all that battery management stuff up, it's gonna hopefully eliminate that that uh, issue that we're having as far as compatibility goes. On top of that, just storing more stuff down there. It's a little safer because a lot of your bigger gear is probably gonna go on the bottom yeah. and with the fuse box and everything now being up top, less you know possibilities of damaging your fuse box or any wires and stuff. All right, I'm noticing something else in here. What yes. is this down here? So, with your guys' battery, it's up in the toolbox. Correct. Your inverter is in the toolbox. Yep. So that is 110 volt wire that is ran from your toolbox to here. So okay. if you want access to 110 when you're off grid, oh. you can plug into your inverter mm -hmm. and turn it on and there's already a cable running up underneath. So now you'll have access to 110 right back here. So for like someone that has CPAP or something That's like correct. that, it'd be great to be able to plug that in. That's correct. So there's enough space here that the cord can come up yes. to get to whatever's sitting on this counter. Yep. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's enough room to get cords in between there. And I mean, if you really wanted to, if you needed a lot of power, you can actually unplug your power strip from your short power plug plug it into there oh. and then have access to the entire power strip from your inverter. Interesting, okay, great. All right, so we just noticed that they changed this bracket up a little bit from what they had before. The HT, that's really cool, it used to be up here and they moved it down to here. So Jordan, why did you guys make that change? So we did that change because we've actually done a couple changes. I know we've also added the backer plate. I'm not sure yeah. if you guys have I don't you know, think we have that in ours. So this one will have a backer plate. Okay. All of yours have backers on the inside. We did that for everybody just to add more rigidity to the bars, mm -hmm. allow them to handle more weight. Okay. So with that, it was a feeling of Bob's, just with his engineering background, that having this logo further up here where we're gonna be pushing down all that yeah. weight from tents and things, yep. it might've taken away from that rigidity. So moving it down here, putting that backer plate in, having this all solid, is gonna add to that weight bearing on your roof rack system. Makes sense. So we also noticed that the bars don't go beyond the brackets anymore. Um, on our other trailer, it went beyond. And now we were able to put a bar from this bracket to that other one to have our shower room hang from it. So we'll have to come up with a new mod for that one. So what do you think of the new trailer? I love it. I love it too. I like the color. It's got a lot of cool things. Mm -hmm. And the air. This first night, I think we're going to already use it. It's, it's definitely sticky and warm out. <laughs> like, yeah, you're a little, a little sweat. sweaty already. After we get everything packed into it, it's going to feel good to be in the air. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the upgrades we did from the other trailer. Okay. Say, so we have the XL edition. So mm -hmm. with the XL versus the standard mid-range, the biggest difference, I think, is the two-inch lift kit. Yes. So the hikers decided to give it a little more ground clearance. So we got a two-inch lift. Um, that moves our spare tire from underneath to the front, mm -hmm. uh, so you get additional clearance. A little bit bigger tire. Um, also, for people that are taller, we're a little bit shorter. We're five six, five eight. So the awning on our last trailer was totally fine for us. But if we'd have friends over that were six foot range, they'd always have to duck underneath it. So with this trailer being a couple inches taller, that should help that people don't have to duck under the awning as much. Yep. Let's go over some of the other things. So we stuck with a 
standard two bar setup for the roof. Mm -hmm. We added the rooftop air unit. Right. We still have a max fan. Definitely don't want to go without that because yep. there's definitely going to be times we're not using the air and so the max fan will be our go-to for most of our camping. The 2022 edition has the elevator bolts, uh, mm -hmm. the secured fender so you can stand on it. Yep. So that's all trailers have that now coming from the factory hiker. We've got the bigger toolbox so that will fit more of our yep. outdoor gear. Yep. So you got an XL toolbox versus a large. Mm -hmm. um, little bit bigger. But one of the biggest upgrades is the lithium battery. Oh, yes. So we added the lithium battery setup. And then in order to keep it more topped off, if we're going to upgrade to the lithium, we opted to go with the rooftop mm -hmm. solar panel. So there's no thinking about it. You're always pulling sun, whether you're going down the road or it's yeah. parked in your driveway. Yeah, so that should be good. Yeah, should be a nice feature. Because you would like to do a little bit more off-grid camping. I would. So. Got to convince her to get a little more off-grid. I'm getting a little bit more adventurous. So the air conditioner was mostly, mainly her idea. Oh, but you didn't fight me on that one. Uh, no, yeah. no. Sometimes the mosquitoes are really big in Michigan. <laughs> and, and it's hot it and gets humid. Hot. We get the humidity in Michigan. So yes. yes, the air in a state campground will be nice. <laughs> Definitely. So we'll love that feature. And we like to go camping more south. Yep. And with that, anticipating that there'll be more humidity down there too. Correct. So outside of that, 24 inch galley, mm -hmm. uh, stayed with that standard, still did the exterior light package on mm -hmm. the sides with floods and a spot on the back. So all that's the same. Yeah. So it's a five by 10 and we have an extra foot then inside the interior part. So we are gonna make shelves out of that part is what we decided to do to take advantage of the extra foot. Yes, definitely. So with our queen, queen fold, trifold mattress, we're gonna- Queen fold? Did I say queen fold? Yeah, you did say queen fold. So with our queen trifold mattress, we are moving that over from our mid-range to the XL. Mm -hmm. And with it being five by 10, we're gonna have that extra space in the front for more additional storage. A lot of modifications coming for that section. Mm -hmm. So we'll show you our plans in the future. Yeah, I'm excited to make it ours. Mm -hmm. We still opted with the side um, table. Yes, because I it. have to have my cooking space. Yep, we got to keep her cooking space the same so she can keep feeding me. So He never complains about that part. No, never. never. However, I have to have it set up so I can keep feeding him. Yes. So outside of that, yes, there's going to be plenty of modifications, things to come. Keep your eyes on the channel. Uh, subscribe, really helps us out. Give mm -hmm. us a like if you like this video. Um, probably teased you a little bit on the last video. How many of you really knew that we weren't getting going away from Hiker? Uh, you never know. Things can change. <laughs> we've got everything else pretty much the same, right? Yeah. We've kind of honed in on what we liked with the trailer, and we just made a few modifications to make it better. Yep. Well, Wendy will say it 20 more times, but she loves having this extra storage here in the front. We got the foot. It's kind of disorganized. We don't have our shelving in yet. But as you can see, all the way across, I got a full-size duffel bag and a couple of these boxes. She's got these cloth boxes. We are testing out a plastic box that usually fits in the back of the galley. That fits up here, no problem. So depending on how you want to organize, it can work. We got a little electronics area. Very unorganized <laughs> at first night out. But it definitely works. And the extra room of the five by 10 is definitely a winner so far. Feels good. Nice and soft on the piggy toes. Yeah? Where yeah. did we get that mat from? We got it from GTFO Overland. <laughs> we always mess up that name. So GTF Overland. Gotcha. So it's a surfer mat um, that they kind of created so that they didn't have to stand in the sand. Um, but yeah, this should work out well for getting the dirt off of our feet when we were trying to get in our trailer. This will be more a mat side is what, we tip, what we're planning on using it for. Then we'll use the bigger mat here on the um, 
the main living area side. But it should be good to get your feet clean before you hop in the trailer. Keep yep. the dirt outside and clean as you can while you're camping on the inside. It's so nice to be back in my kitchen. Yep. Is it the right height? Um, it's a little bit on the high side, but I think yep. that's more related to the lot. When I had to put the leg down for the table, I had to really extend it. So I think it's more the lot is sloped backwards. Yeah. So it's a little bit high, um, but I think that's also the trailer is two inches taller. So if it was two inches lower, it'd probably be a bit more where I like it to be. Yep. But it's doable on the outside again. Oh, the propane tank we had mounted out here. So it's nice and convenient to hook up to my stove. Yep. I have my side table so I can put all my extra stuff, the food, the prep area. Yep. And then I just am ready to go. Nice. Yeah. And the hose is long enough for the propane? Yeah. Not yep. a problem. Just perfect. With that, we appreciate your support. Like the video, share it with a friend, follow us, hit the notification bell, and like we always say, <laughs> get make out sure you get out and, and do, do some, some camping. camping. We'll see you on the next <laughs> yeah. video, guys. Bye. Take care.